so you want to ride your first hundred miles on your bike. Okay, all right. Now here's the thing. It, it's it's not as hard as you as you think it is now at the outset. It's just that it requires a lot of discipline, planning, sticking with it, and uh, you know that 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 kind of um, that kind of endurance um, is is going to be your biggest issue. Now, I am not going to help you uh, do a hundred miles in a race. I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help you figure out how to do your first hundred miles um, just for for you, and then you can do whatever with that. This year, I did my first century, and uh, it's something that you do have to plan for. You do have to work towards, and once you've done it, it's easier to figure out how to do it again. So, uh, first off, uh, hundred miles is called a century ride. Not really that important, but whatever. Um, the first step to being able to do your first hundred miles is choosing your bike correctly. Now, if you have, for instance, a mountain bike, that's not going to work. You're, there's, there's, a few, uh, there's a few reasons. Right here I have behind me a, a road bike, just a, a standard road bike. It's nothing special. Um, first off, if you look up here, it doesn't have any, sh any of those shocks, any of those, you know, so it's called suspension. If you look back here, it doesn't have one of the, it doesn't have any suspension here either. Um, the reason for that is because on a road bike they make it for you know um, when you when you have suspension it kind of slows you down so that's a short answer <laughs> um, but uh, you know so having a mountain bike is gonna make it a lot harder um, on a mountain bike typically you sit higher up and that's gonna get kind of old and tedious after a couple miles um, on road bikes they have it where you're more in the position um, you kind of have this like leaning forward thing going on it is a lot easier, and I know you would think, "Oh, well, that's surely going to be harder." No, it, it's it's easier. It's easier. Um, it is possible, I suppose, to get 100 miles without a road bike. I just don't know how. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, it's not just because of the suspension issue. Um, also, weight is a big factor. Mountain bikes. Um, it seems like road bikes are, are it's it's easier to get a, a lighter road bike than it is a mountain bike. I I could be wrong, but that's just from my own experience. Um, another problem is that road bikes have a lot thinner tires. Um, this is the difference between going, you know, eight miles per hour down the road and eighteen miles per hour down the road. That really adds up over time. It, even if you're doing really good on like a city bike or a mountain bike or whatever. And you're, you know, you're, you're 12 miles per hour. Well, that's going to, that's going to really start to add up 12 miles versus 18 miles or faster. That's a five mile per hour difference. That means per, per hour, you're getting five miles less, which would mean you're going to have to have a lot more endurance to make up for that. So, I mean, you're going to have to bike for longer because you're not going as fast. So, whereas you can make a hundred miles in like five five hours is yeah, five or six hours if you were using a mountain bike you'd be a lot sore you'd have to practice and, and prepare for for a lot longer and you'd probably be looking more at eight nine hours it's it's gonna it's gonna really start to drag on you so first step is really get the right bike you need you need a bike without suspension with thin tires um, you can get road bikes for used. Just check the frame to make sure there aren't any cracks or anything like that. Sometimes people do crazy things with old road bikes or don't take care of them, that kind of stuff. So uh, the first thing, make sure it's the right, the right bike. The second thing, practice up to it. You're not just going to go out and get 100 miles. Well, I mean, I, I've i seen it done. Like, like somebody started biking and like the next week they did 100 miles. So, I mean, I've seen it done. But chances are you're not going to be one of those people. I wasn't one of those people. It took me like two years before I, I did 100 miles. So I kind of look at it that way. You got to practice up to it. You got to work up to it. Um, increase your, your riding time or your riding miles by smaller amounts every week rather than trying to reach for the stars. Maybe um, try in little increments. Like maybe this week you're going to ride 10 miles and then maybe next week you're going to go 15 miles. Uh, maybe the week after that you go 25. See what I mean? In little increments where you don't have to kill yourself getting to them. They're attainable. You feel good when you hit there. Um, and you're going to find that there's going to be certain mile markers that are kind of like hurdles for you. They're, they're kind of like a, a cap. Um, 
I was stuck at um, uh, before I hit 30. No, no, it was 50. Um, 30 was a little gap, but it only held me back for a couple days. But it was 50 that was really hard. Once 40 or 50. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, once I was able to push past that, I was able to go not just to 50. That that day that I broke 50, I went up into the 60 miles. Um, you know, and that's kind of how those caps work. You're going to think, I can't do this. And a lot of it's going to be in your head. So you're going to have to kind of get to the place of being, okay, well, I can do this. I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to take it one, one mile at a time, one pedal at a time, right? Um, one thing that can help is if you have something to preoccupy you, if it's, um, for those times when you're not having fun anymore and you're just trying to make your goal. And a lot of getting your first 100 miles in, your first century right in, is it's gonna, not going to be very fun. There's going to be times in it where you're just going to be like, oh, right. You know, and that's going to happen. Uh, don't, you know, take a break if you need to. Don't don't be stupid. You know, if you're falling asleep on your bike, you're just going to get hurt. Huh? You just, <laughs> just, just take a break or something, you know. <laughs> Walk it off. <laughs> But, you know, you're going to need something to occupy yourself. Maybe um, try and memorize something. Uh, maybe get an audio book. Now, I typically say please don't ride um, on your bike with anything preventing you from hearing. It's a huge safety hazard. Um, but if the route is okay and you've got blinkers on your car, on your bike, that could help. Um, typically, it's best to just um, get good at distracting yourself up here. Don't think about how tired you are. Don't think about, oh, I can't do this. No, no, no. You can do it. You just, you know, focus on what you're doing. Think about something else. You know, just focus on the next mile. And uh, focus on how much, how much you've already done rather than how much there is left to do. Um, and then sometimes you're going to say, you know, I'm done. I'm going to head home. And then you realize, well, when I get home, I'll be at 100 miles. So, um, typically it's going to be easier for you to get 100 miles on the road over on a stationary bike, like in a house. That's not always true, but I found it true to be, for, for me, that's very much so true. Because you see scenery, you're seeing things, rather than, you know, being confined in a house. Now, you can get around that by, like, watching the TV and stuff, but I think that's, like, the most boring way to do 100 miles. You can do it, and I mean, it's, it's up to you if that works for you. So, um, you know, find, get the right bike. You got to practice up to it. Um, the next thing, make sure that you are treating your body correctly. So this, this, there's a few different things to this. Um, first off, make sure you're stretching before and after. Second off, uh, don't uh, don't overdo it. You know, maybe if you're practicing up like every day, you're you're biking every single day. Well, maybe take like a day off. You know what I mean? Like seven days straight with no exercise, you're just going to cause muscle strain. And if you cause muscle strain and then you try to go for 100 miles. That's going to be disastrous. So maybe go um, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday, just a real light one, just a real easy one. Instead of, you know, Monday and Tuesday, we're going to try for um, 40 miles. You know, Thursday, Friday, we're going to try for 60 miles. And maybe Saturday would just be like a five-mile ride, just to kind of stretch your legs. See what I mean? And uh, y you got to make sure that you're not overdoing it. Your, your body is a body, and it can't handle just like everything. You, you know, there, there's a point when your body says, okay, <laughs> I've had enough. And uh, so stretches before and after, make sure you're not overdoing it. Uh, give your give your muscles breaks. Um, get like packs and stuff for your legs. Get, you can get those knee wraps that, that'll that help your, gets like compresses your knee. It, it'll help with those kinds of aches and pains. Um, elevate your legs at night, you know, take off your shoes and just kind of relax your muscles. Um, get them rubbed out, you know, just like this. It's a great little, great little thing. Um, make sure that you, you try it, try a, a, a a bath soak, um, different kinds of salts and different stuff that, that are for achy muscles and you just kind of let it soak. And uh, once you do your 100 miles, you're going to want to recover too, especially if you go, if you hop up from like 60 mile ride to like 100 mile ride, you're going to want to take like three or four days off with like no riding. And I know that sounds like, oh no, but it, it's actually, it, 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 your body really does need it. Your back will be tired because no matter how strong your your, your mids are when you're when you're biking, 
after 100 miles, you're going to start slouching, and your arms are going to start hurting, and your back's going to start hurting, and your legs are going to start hurting. And, uh. When I did my 100 miles, it was supposed to be a clear day. So I set out, everything's fine, and um, the wind starts picking up when I get ha to the halfway point to turn around. And I'm like, oh, that's not great. So I eat my lunch, and I start heading back straight in, in the, and as I'm leaving, the wind picks up so strong, and it was strong the whole way home. I was going in a headwind. Um, I was supposed to be getting around 18 to 20 mile per hours, miles per hour, and instead I was down at like 8, 10, 7, see what I mean? And it was not good. I tried standing out of the saddle to, to work up, excuse me, to work up a little bit, and it, it, it was just eating up my energy. I wasn't even going any faster. So I just kind of did the, I don't know if you, let me make it where you can see it better, I just kind of sucked, sucked my body in like this and had my legs as close to the bike as possible and just went like that and uh, that was really all I could do. Um, <laughs> it, it wasn't really something that, that, that what are you going to do? So, you know, my wife was all, do you want me to just throw the bike in the, in the car, we'll just go home? And I was all, no, you know, I've set out to do this, I'm going to do it. Uh, but uh, typically... <laughs> typically just yeah anyways it kind of wears down on the body and uh, so maybe try different uh, different soaks um, remember to eat healthy get plenty of get plenty of vitamins make sure you're getting getting things that will help your muscles not be so cramped um, another thing that can really help and this is kind of extremely important so okay we got the right bike we're working up to it we're taking care of our body now the next thing is getting enough calories okay so when you go for your ride before you start okay before you before you get on the bike make sure you eat a breakfast i'm not talking about just like i had a pickle no i i mean i mean actually eat like you know a, a bowl of cereal or, or two bowls of cereal or i don't know so, something like that where you're actually getting something you know a, a thing of oatmeal with raisins in it i, I don't know man just you know, look up different popular biker breakfasts, and maybe I'll talk about it some other time. Um, but just, you know, just something that will really stick with you for a little bit. And then after you start writing, about every 40 minutes, so 30 minutes to an hour, you're going to stop and take a snack. Here, eat a snack. You don't have to get off your bike. You can eat while biking. That's what I'm saying. I mean, whatever you're doing, make sure to have a snack. Um, and typically you want... You probably want about 60 to 90 calories for every 45 minutes to an hour. I feel like 120 is too much, but maybe around 60 to 90. You're going to have to find the sweet spot for you. Um, but, you know, there's going to be different stages of hunger. You're going to get kind of hungry, and then you're going to make your mark, and you're going to eat. Or if you, you're you going to say, I'm not hungry, and you're going to just go. And then when you get to be about an hour hour and a half without eating you're just gonna it's called bonking it's where you don't um you, you don't have any strength left you just kind of you know you're just done um it can even make you collapse on your bike not fun so <laughs> i have done that before not a good idea um so make sure that you are getting uh snacks you start off with a full breakfast snacks every 40 minutes um that right there is essential Honestly, if I could if I could limit the things that will help you get your first hundred miles, the, the the things that are most important, I would honestly say the right bike and eating well. If out of all the things that I mentioned, those two things I I feel like are the single most important things. You know, um, the rest of it is just to make it easier to make sure you don't injure yourself, that kind of stuff. But those two things are are really kind of the the highlight okay so now the next thing um, to help you is plan your route don't just go out there and say I'm gonna get 100 miles plan what you're gonna do tell people where you where you are too so that if anything happens they know where to look for you um, you know are are you gonna go a really difficult hundred miles and like climb a mountain are you going to go on flatlands w w what's your game plan where are you going um, are those roads open um, are you able to do that? You know, different stuff like that. Some places bikes just aren't really allowed, so that's kind of an important thing. <laughs> um, maybe you had it in your head that you were going to ride on Interstate uh, 40, and uh, well, then you find out that bikes don't. I 40 doesn't allow for bikes, and it's like, oh well, I guess I won't be doing that. 
Um, so plan your route, have an idea of where you're going. Um, stop after about three to four and a half hours for another meal. Um, the snacks will help you and everything, but even with those cal those calories, you're still going to be going down eventually until you need another meal. And so between three and four and a half hours, you're really going to want to start thinking seriously about um, about lunch. Um, so you might want to think about uh, having your route go to a restaurant that you want to eat at, or having your a spouse or a loved one meet you somewhere and and you know maybe have like a picnic or something. Or if you don't want to do any of those things, I guess you could carry your lunch with you. It's going to be very difficult. It's going to add your weight and it's going to make you go slower. It's just not going to be a good time. You can do that if you want to. I mean, it's up to you. Um, okay, as far as drinking, make sure to drink water every 10 minutes, even if you're not thirsty. Um, you're going to say, ah, I don't really need it, but you, you really do. Like, you're going to dehydrate really, really fast. Um, and if it's a hot day, especially do. Um, and make sure you aren't being stupid here. I mean, if you if you are elderly and you have pre-existing conditions, make sure you, you, your doctor knows about this, that they're okay with this, that you have somebody watching out for you. You don't want to collapse on a road and get run over. I mean, it's just how disastrous for you, for the people who run you over. I mean, nobody wins in that situation. It's just it's it's terrible so you know maybe maybe don't don't be foolish about this you know if it's an excessively hot day uh, really anywhere over 90 degrees you're, you're gonna want to think about maybe not doing it that day um, unless you have just an extremely high heat tolerance but I mean everybody has a limit if you're gonna do it maybe start really early in the morning like around 3 in the morning or something and then you'll be done before it gets real hot it, you're, you're gonna have to have to think that one through but drink every 10 minutes even if you're not thirsty um, have stops for refilling they say for one of those uh, bottles uh, the water bottles that you have on your bike they say plan for one of those asking you about eh, an hour maybe okay so if you have two of them on your bikes on your bike plan for every two hours having a water stop where you can get more water um, this can be people's houses or restaurants or whatever. Typically, they're not going to really care if you go in and say, hey, can I get some water? Um, <clears throat> the next thing that can help you get your 100 miles is it's keeping up your limberness on the bike. So you can do this in a, in a number of ways. You can stop and, and stretch every um, two or three-ish hours. That's totally doable. Um, another thing you can do is you can stand up out of your seat to pedal for a little bit every about... 10 minutes or so um, that that'll that's obviously going to help stretch the stretch some, the lower back muscles and the legs and stuff another thing you can do is you can switch your positions so if you are in this position on a road bike you can switch where you're holding the bars in the middle instead so instead of like this you can go to this one and then you can hold yourself up you can do no hand and kind of let, let yourself go back you can kind of rest your hands on the very top instead of grabbing this. You can go like this and just kind of stretch it out. You can grab on different parts of the handlebar just to kind of stretch your arms out. You can use your arms and kind of push your back back to kind of just stretch it and then let it go. Um, you can get off the bike and do stretches. I already mentioned that. You can, you know, try different different uh, positions. Just kind of move around, see how it see how it fills and loosens up. Don't wait until you're already hurting. That's a sure sign you waited too long. Um, do these things, you know, every 30 minutes to an hour and a half or something, and you'll probably have a lot better time of it. Um, but uh, but switching positions, that's something that should happen all the time on your bike anyways. You know, you shouldn't just be sitting there for however many hours it takes you and doing the same thing over and over again. That's how you get muscle strain. That's how you get blisters. That's just not a good time. Um, another thing you can do uh, is stop and rest for a bit. You know, it, it's it's not a race. Just stop, get out, get off your bike. Kind of just maybe sit down out there in the uh, on, on the side of the road for a little bit. You know, uh, walk around a little bit on the uh, in the dirt beside the road. Whatever. Um, if there's a rest stop, pull into the rest stop and get off your bike and just kind of walk around for a little bit. Um, just the change of of th change is going to help. Now here's the problem: if you stop for too long, your your muscles are going to start going into that like kind of a dormant mode, and it's going to be like I could just sleep and then maybe you actually will fall asleep so don't don't take breaks too long because then your body's gonna be like okay we're done good 
Um, next thing, take your time. Don't focus on quickness, but on sticking with it. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. Don't try, don't use up all your energy. What some people do is when they start a race or when they start something like this, they start out and, they, and, and oh, they're really pedaling. They're really going at it. They're giving it their all. But the thing is, this is what happens. You won't be able to make the miles. You'll be able to do like maybe 10 miles really quickly, but you won't be able to get 100 miles. Whereas if you just stop yourself, slow down, pace yourself and go slowly, pedal slower, you'll find yourself being able to go longer periods of time. So uh, make sure to pace yourself. Um, next is, excuse me, this is just as important as planning your route itself, and that's plan a day with not too much wind, um, where it's not too hot, uh, a route that, that isn't completely uphill. Um, that'll get old. Um, I, there's a mountain that I bike up here, and it takes about 20... One, 25, some, maybe 25 miles um, to get up to the very top. And it takes about three and a half hours to do those 25 miles. It gets pretty steep sometimes. I mean, you go up over 2,000 feet, and that's kind of a big climb. So you're going to want to keep that in mind. Maybe don't go solid uphill. Maybe don't go solid downhill. When you're going downhill for a long time, like those 25 miles per hour, 25 miles back down the hill, um, you, you, it really starts to hurt. You're leaning forward a lot. You know, you, you're kind of stiff from, from being prepared for a quick break. You're, you're, you're always on the edge trying to look ahead to see what you're going to, if you're going to hit anything. It, that, that kind of concentration really really wears out at you you're gonna find you're, you're gonna start tensing up and stuff so maybe pick something that's somewhere in the middle where it has ups and downs um, it's okay to have an easy century ride for your first century it doesn't have to be like the world's most difficult century ride you know you can ease yourself into it um, that's something that's great just getting to 100 miles and when you do you're gonna feel so accomplished but with that being said you know um, it doesn't have to be the hardest hundred miles in the world. You can you can work your way to it. You can make it where you know just getting there you know is is going to be a big struggle anyways. So if you can overcome that hurdle, the next time you can worry about overcoming that hurdle again and doing it hard. So um, it, it's 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 you are in competition with yourself, not with everybody else. Okay, I hope that that helps. Um, and the last thing to make it where you ride your first 100 miles, okay? Now, please remember this. This is very important. Tell people where you are, what your route is, and then check in with them regularly. Like every hour when you stop and you stop and get off your bike and text them and say, I'm at mile marker so-and-so. Just something where people know where you are. There's a lot of people who get hurt on bikes and um, a lot of people who have problems like heart conditions and stuff like that. Um, that they didn't know that they had until they were out in the middle of a ride. So just make sure that people know where you are and why has he not checked in with me. And see what I mean? We're, yeah, it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but if anything bad ever does happen, you're going to be really happy that you took that inconvenience. What I do is I actually use a uh, website on my, um, on my computer. It's called Bike Map. And I map out my rides. This tells me exactly how far it's supposed to be, and so I can plan for it more. And then it gives me the opportunity to pull it up on my computer and walk away. And then if my wife comes in, she can see, okay, this is the route that he's that he's on, and she can follow it exactly and know where to look for me and that kind of stuff. Um, and this just gives a lot more. I don't know. It's better. I, I think it's better because you can. Uh, map out a route that you haven't ridden yet. On a lot of the other ones, you have to actually go on the ride before it maps it out. And I, I like to know beforehand what I'm getting into, what's the elevation gain, you know, how long is it going to take, kind of idea. Um, so you know, those are just some ideas that will help you get your your first hundred miles in. Um, but out of all of them, like I said, get the right bike. Make sure that you're you're doing your snacks correctly. Those two things will really be the make it or break it kind of kind of thing.